All right, y'all, so we are back for another episode of the Kitty Box. I'm pretty sure that everybody, even if you were not watching the Oscars, everybody saw this moment. Um, before we get into that, let me just say this. Beyonce? <laughs> Beyonce did her thing. Beyonce performed Be Alive at the tennis court, like my sources had told me, and she did an amazing job. She looked amazing. She sounded amazing. The production was beautiful. Um, luckily, because she was Beyonce, it slightly but didn't too much overshadow uh, the situation. But yeah, I had to get the Beyonce praise out first. But oh my God, if y'all don't know, well, y'all do know, but we're just going to go ahead and paint a little picture for y'all. So... We're at the Oscars. Um, Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall, and what's that big white bitch? Um, is it Amanda Seyfried? No, 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 no. Uh, Amy Schumer Amy were all Schumer. hosting the Oscars. And Chris Rock came up. You know, I guess he was presenting an award. And he did his little comedy bit. You know, he does it every Oscars, I believe. And this particular year, he said, Jada, love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. Um, for people who don't know, G.I. Jane was a bald-headed woman. Um, but Jada's bald because she suffers from alopecia. And I guess the joke didn't go over well. Will Smith initially laughed once he saw Jada's expression. He got up out of his seat, walked onto the stage, and slapped the dog shit out of Chris Rock. He then turned around, went back to his seat, and they had a, a brief exchange. It was quiet. It was quiet as Will yelled to Chris Rock, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth twice. Now, America is in an uproar. Half are siding with Will, half are siding with Chris, and half are just kind of in the middle saying, you know, it's just an incident. What are y'all thoughts on it? I'm not on anyone's side. I really don't give a damn um, because it's just like, girl, please, how many times have white men been out here slapping the shit out of people or doing some weird shit on these awards? Um, and we don't ever really say nothing about it. Um, it does seem like since it's the Oscars, everything is heightened. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do question this, though. If Chris Rock was a white man, how would this have turned out? I can answer that. Um, the year Halle Berry won her Oscar, the white man from Cadillac Records, I think his name is Adrian something, walked onto the stage and kissed her. She then went on Watch What Happens Live and said it was not planned, and she was wondering the entire time what the fuck is happening. She just went along with it because it was the Oscars. He was never prosecuted. He was never, you know, reprimanded. He was never disciplined. Nobody ever talked about it. They laughed, clapped, and went on. So that's what happens when a black, when a white man assaults somebody that's black. And then in that regard, we already know because Chris Rock is black, he, he, at this time, he can't call the police even if he wanted to. He couldn't press charges if he wanted to. He'll be looked at like the first black Karen or Ken. So either way you take it, Chris Rock is always going to, he's going to get the, uh, the shit anyway, right? Because mm -hmm. for one, you didn't defend yourself because girl, please. <laughs> you This dude literally, Will Smith walked up there like he was in one of his movies. Yeah. You should have known. Instinct should have kicked him and said, child, this is a stance of someone who's marching, you know, when the saints go marching in and they're, they're ready to battle. So the fact that you didn't even prepare yourself lets me know that you've been walking in these peaceful, you know, white spaces for a very long time and you've been feeling really comfortable. You really didn't think that something like this could happen to you. But even if you don't think that way, nature should always kick in and be like, girl, <laughs> it's time to put that set up real quick and defend yourself against this man who's coming to do you harm um so that was it for me like i fucked the oscars i don't care where we're at like you can get this work anytime girl i don't care where we could be in the doctor's office you put your hands on me I, by all means it, everything goes out the way i'm seeing red so that's what it was for me but mm, i don't know i don't I think said, he was I don't expecting really it though. i just 
her, you can tell when someone's running no, about you. I, no, because when he walked up to Chris and when he initially walked away from Chris, he was smiling. He didn't get serious until he sat in that seat and started hurling insults back at him. The whole time he had a smile on his face and he didn't really kind of like, you know, rear back to slap him. It was just like, boom. So I don't even think he saw it coming. And a lot of times we've seen it with the uh, with uh, Steve Harvey's award show. We've seen uh, David Mann and Laverne, whatever his name is, go Lavelle Crawford go at it. You know, sometimes when people walk on stage, it's to, you know, say a little something, you know, to jab back at you. I don't think he expected to get hit. What I will say about this situation is that violence of the, I'm never gonna call it violence, but him getting slapped was not necessary. I feel like the point would have gotten across if he would have just sat in his seat and said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth twice. If just the yelling would have taken place and not the walk up and slap, I think he still would have gotten Chris Rock's attention on top of the fact that this is the second time at the Oscars that Chris Rock has attacked Will Smith's wife. He already talked about her not going to the Oscars previously. On top of the fact that even if we want to steer away from Jada, he always talks about women's hair. I remember the year, and y'all may not remember this, I remember the year Beyonce performed at the VMAs in that gold unit. I think it was 2003. And she performed uh, Crazy in Love. She came down from the ceiling. Chris Rock said, I loved you, Beyonce, and that sea biscuit on top of your head. So he's always been talking about women and their hair, which is ironic to me because he came out with a documentary called Good Hair that was showcasing and highlighting the different, you know, facets of black women's hair one woman of which had alopecia so if you care about women's hair and you know that black women's hair is very precious to them and attached to their ego and self-respect why would you even do it with her because people are arguing that chris rock didn't know that she had alopecia which i don't believe because i don't watch the red table talk and i knew it and I know that Hollywood is a vast place, but Black Hollywood and Black Excellence Hollywood, it, there's a small margin of people in that in that circle. Chris Rock, you're in that circle. So whether or not you saw the Red Table Talk, you knew of her condition. Where it gets around. Again, I knew, and I don't even watch the show. So, yeah. One more <laughs> thing I did want to say about that is Chris Rock is known for really coming at the Black community. When you think about it, he's there's always these small little jabs at us and more so black women out of all of the people that were at the Oscars you just had to single her out mm -hmm. and then I don't know if we heard the reports people are saying that that joke wasn't written by him it was written by someone else it's in the and same vein like, of all he talks about though he's talked about Jada before he's talked yeah. about black women's hair so even if even if he didn't write it it's more believable to assume he did so it's like, eh. on top of the fact that he does appropriate um, talking down on the black culture, because I saw a clip of him sitting in a room with Jerry Seinfeld and another white man, and he basically told that man, you're black. And that man said verbatim, so you're calling me a nigger. And he said it with an ER. And Chris Rock was like, yeah. <laughs> and then they laughed it off. He wasn't offended. He didn't tell him not to say the word. They laughed it off. A white man looked at a black man and said, so I'm a nigger. And they all laughed in the room. So it's like... He's always been the personification of the black Jerry Seinfeld. Very dry, very boring, very just nothingness. I've never really found Chris Rock to be funny. I'll put Tiffany Haddish over him any day. Ooh, that's lovely. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that is saying a whole lot. This Jason. is Gucci. Uh, this is uh, a costume change. <laughs> well, my take on it, um, I thought Will Smith was... Okay, let me go back. When I first saw it, I was in complete shock, which I believe Chris Rock absolutely was in fucking shock. Hence the reason he didn't fight back, because it, because nobody expected that from Will Smith. And even myself, I'm a pop off type of bitch. Like if somebody does something like that to me, but I'm not standing on the stage in front of 52 million people who are watching this shit and I'm doing a job at the Oscars, which is the highest award show in our country. So I can't honestly say in that exact moment, knowing that, that I would have reacted in that way and, and fought him back because the slap was so goddamn hard. It would have shocked the shit out of me 
before I even realized what the hell was going on, he turned and walked away so fast. He was literally like, what the fuck just happened? So, um, as far as Will Smith, he was completely out of order for doing that. That was definitely the wrong place and wrong time. If you was going to smack him, do the shit backstage, catch his ass at the after party, something like of that nature. Because there were too many people that were watching that in support of you, including tennis players, young tennis players who were excited to see you possibly win that award. So it, it was very disappointing. I thought it was completely, I'm going to go ahead and say out of character for him because he's never presented himself in that way to us other than acting. So that was completely out of order, wrong place, wrong time. That bullshit ass apology that he came out with, you only saying it because you've received so much backlash. And most importantly, I think that it completely overshadowed the entire night because there were black actors that actually did win mm-hmm. Oscars. Quest Love, shout out to him. And hell, I heard Samuel L. Jackson even won an Oscar. We heard His nothing of that. Yeah, and he's been in the game for 50 years. So the fact that he did that bullshit on that night, especially, and there was a lot of other um, people of color that won awards as well. There was a trans person. Um, well, not, I'm sorry, not a trans. Um, I think a lesbian, Hispanics, Asians, like all these different cultures were winning. And that has been the most that people of color have ever won in Oscars. And this was completely ruined and completely overshadowed by Will's bullshit. I will say this. Um, that was Quest Love's award. Chris Rock was presenting it to Quest Love, so he didn't. He really didn't even get a moment. And much love to um, Samuel L. Jackson because he did win his first ever Oscar that night. Um, here's what I don't like, though. Um, before I get into what I don't like, um, going back to the the white man, uh, I just remembered that was an indigenous woman um, who years ago went on. She. She was representing somebody who had won an Oscar for a movie and she went on to the stage in her guard, not her guard, but her in her, you know, perspective unit. And she basically was like, we can't accept this. You know, y'all need to stop mistreating Indian people. And um, reports say that John Wayne was being held back because he was trying to go on stage and attack that woman. And nobody said anything. And right after she got off stage, he went on stage and was like, well, I guess I'm standing here on behalf of all the Westerns who've killed, you know, like he was just, he was very rude to her. Um, but what I don't like is that, um, and I know that you didn't mean it this way, Jace, but I hate when black people are like, you should have done this on this stage. Bitch, fuck the white people. I don't understand. Would you rather it had happened on the NAACP stage, on the BT stage? No, not no, you. No, it should have happened. Other people are saying that. Not you. I'm saying that other people say that. So when you said that, it just kind of took okay. me back to what they were thinking. Okay. But um, because yeah. I because I didn't play I didn't place a color on it at all. A lot of people, a lot of people were saying that. You know, <laughs> yeah, Vivica okay. said that. Uh, Stephen A. Smith said that. A lot of people were like, that was the wrong place. It was the Oscars, and it was like, first of all, he shouldn't have been slapping nobody on no stage. You are black excellence. No, laugh it up like you did with Laverne Cox and go the fuck on about your business. But. What what's the difference between the Oscar stage and the NAACP stage? What's the difference between an Oscar stage and a BET stage? Like I don't understand why we place these white people's award shows so high up above our own. I, I just don't get that, and I, I don't I don't like the fact that that's why people were so outraged. It was the Oscars. No, a black man walked on stage and slapped somebody for something that was said to him. And that's another thing, like, and I uh, I hate to say this, but this is a page that we can kind of take out of white people's book. White people get ragged on, roasted, and all of that. They laugh and take it, slap it on the knee and go on. The moment you feel disrespected, you go on stage and choose violence? Leave that ghetto shit at home. You don't have to do that everywhere you go. Time, like you said, Jace, time and place. I'm in a suit. At an award show, getting recognized for a biopic I did for a man that I have mad respect for. Even if I win the award, it's not even about me. It's about the story that I helped tell. And you smacking people? I and don't think that you, was cool. And if you really look at it, 
from even when I saw it the very first time, I knew it wasn't a joke. Body language says everything, and, and you know the way he was carrying himself. The first thing that happened is everybody started laughing in the crowd. So mm-hmm. it made me think to myself, I was like, mm, all of these white people just ha 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 ha. They're just laughing at this because we're, we're, it's entertaining to see black people hurt each other. They love it. You're just feeding into that narrative more. So to the rest of the black people out here in the world, don't take like what we're saying as like, oh, we're coming for y'all. No, the world has been coming for us. The, the world has been trying to have the excuse to say and, and put these narratives on our culture, our community, our people for crying out loud. They mm. expect that of us. So when we feed into those narratives, we're not doing ourselves in any service. Oh, there are those Negroes again doing what they're doing. You know, now, what I'm saying? I will say like, this um, to the defense of the Oscars. I think that everybody laughed initially because they they thought what we thought. Like I, I'm not like you. I, I thought, thought it was, was a joke. joke. I thought it was a joke. And then the, the first clip that circulated, everything after the slap was silenced. You just saw people's mouth yeah. move. So I really didn't see anything. But when I heard and I heard how sil- y'all don't go back and watch the clip. It was silence when he said keep my wife's name. That's all you heard. Everybody was silenced. I think a, a, sh- a shock had just waved over the entire, you know, night. And it was just like, wait, this is real? Lupita's face said it all. Like, at first you like, ah, whoa. Everybody was like, what? And Dress for the yeah, guys, I think, might I add, honey. Yes, yeah, she was. I think that's what, what happened. I think everybody was initially shook. And they tried to shake it off. Diddy came out and said something. Amy Schumer said something. But... We're on edge now. But can I can I let me say this though, and I'm gonna finish my thought on, on, on all this whole thing. We gotta give humanity grace. We can yeah. only take so much. Like we said before, it's out of character for Will. God only knows the different things that he's been going through. The past two years have been a homage to August Alcina dicking his wife down, child, and the in the constant having to you know answer those questions and Again, like he's already a narcissist. Let's be honest about that. All of these things accompanying, and you get up to this moment, he could have just, it is what we're human. We're fallible. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things that we may end up regretting. So, why are we holding human beings to these high standards? Whether you're white, whether you're black, we're all going to go down some type of road that we choose violence on when we really didn't have to. I don't care who you are, how pristine your goddamn record is. Your behavior has been a grade A for all of these many years. If that's the person that eventually is going to blow up. That's the person that ends up being a school shooter, for crying out loud. The nice guy. The mm-hmm. one who's been giving passes all these years. So again, like I said, I'm not on either. I'm on the fence with this situation. I don't really care. But I think we have to chalk it up to like we're human beings. Things are going to happen, girl. I'm not mad at Will. Um, I'm not mad I- at Chris. I'm not mad at nobody. I honestly, <clears throat> I honestly felt like once because can saw, we be honest here? I'm gonna, take a book, I'm gonna take a book out of Rodney. I know I posted that video, child, but I want to take a book out of that, like because white people have a history, girl, of doing some fuck shit against the people. We talked about the Indians a minute ago. They've ravaged this whole entire country, girl. The indigenous people. They have brought slaves and killed us. So really, but this wasn't a white person violence, that disrespected him. This was a black man. Viol- but I'm saying no. But there's a lot of white outrage over this situation. Mm. There's a lot of white outrage against this, and it's like, oh, black people are doing what black people. No, girl. Like we want to put it on the chopping block, girl. White people, y'all still win, girl. <laughs> you still win, yeah. girl. When it comes to you, the foundations you've laid for slaying the girls. But I, oh, but I will say this though. Um, going back to what I said earlier, he has the right to be upset. But I think just yelling and shut the fuck up when referring to my wife would have sufficed. Like that would have showed Chris Rock, I'm serious. Whatever, whatever. Do not choose to slap Chris Rock and you just laugh when Lauren Cox said what she said. Because if you felt all that rage, you should have pushed her ass off that podium. If that's how you felt, then that's what you should have done. Y'all got y'all know that there are like writers that write all of this shit for those award shows right mm-hmm. and that there's a whole team of people that knew that that joke was coming How that that's what I initially believed mm-hmm. however I'm hearing that that was off the cuff like we don't really know what the fuck <laughs> until somebody official comes, comes out and say oh this was actually in the script 
But there's a team of writers that write these jokes and all this bullshit for these award shows. So there was a group of people that knew that. But I remember what I was going to say to um, about um, Will. When the shit first happened, he initially laughed. And it wasn't, I believe, until he saw Jada's reaction to that. Yeah. When he, when he decided to get pissed. So when YB, where you were saying, like, he, I guess got to his breaking point I didn't really see that in his actions because he was laughing originally and then the yeah, camera panned away and then we don't know what happened I don't know if Jada looked at him like motherfucker like you laughed I think he looked at Jada but I, I also don't think he thought it was funny I think it was one of those professional laughs like he gave Laverne like <laughs> I'm being cool right now you know I don't think it was I don't think he thought it was funny but I do think that he looked over saw Jada cause you could see Jada and Jada was like you know I don't fuck with you like that and so I think at that point he got up and did what, what he did but I just mm. and um we've been shining a light on the black people and all this and all of that A I will say this that was Chris Rock because he did again he attacked Jada again at the 2016 Oscars so you and Jada have this ongoing thing going on at this point number one number two in addition to shining light on black people let's shine a light on Will Packer he produced and directed and put this whole entire Oscar show um, on the road this year. This is the first time a black man has been in charge of the Oscars. And even though it was overshadowed by the slap, kudos to you. Because outside of that, I heard it was a really great show. But yeah, I, I just, mm, it, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. Because I feel like you were doing it on the heels of let me protect her and let me do, some, let me do that. But if nobody's talking about Jada right now. We're all talking about you. So, some people say it was fake, that it was staged, and you know, all of this and all of that. So, I, I, at this point, I, I really don't know what to believe. That statement that was put out by Chris Rock, not his statement. Um, his reps have come out and said that we have said nothing on the matter. So, this little apology and all of this, no. But I will say that I was watching a clip earlier, and Wanda Sykes was on The Ellen Show. And she said that at the after party, Chris Rock apologized to her. And she was like, well, why are you apologizing to me? And he said, well, because this is your night. It was supposed to be about you, Regina Hall, and Amy Schumer, and they got overshadowed, and I'm sorry. So a lot of people are singing Chris's praises for being professional, for maintaining his professionalism, and for being an all-around great guy. But, um... Yeah, you know, I I would have to say I don't know where this came from. I agree with y'all. This is completely out of his character for Will. Um, even his mom, when she was interviewed, she said, yeah, I was not expecting that. He's never been violent like this. Especially given the fact that you saw your dad be violent towards your mom growing up. Like, you, you would think, you know, even in the name of protecting women, you should be preaching love and violence not being the answer. So, yeah, that's what, that's, those are my thoughts on it. I, um, I hope you know, I'm not going to say I hope. I know they can recover. This is Will and Jada. They're not going to get canceled. Nothing is about to go away for them. Nobody's going to pass up an opportunity to work with Will Smith because they're afraid they're going to get slapped. Now, what I will say is he's opened up a new can of worms. Um, aside from the fact that, you know, his Oscar... I, was this his first Oscar? It may have been. Um, even though his Oscar win is being overshadowed by the slap, he's opened up like a new meme. You know, now people are going to be like, don't make me Will Smith your ass. You know, and they're, they're going to take that and run with it. Even though people are over the, the topic of it, this thing will live on and it's going to grow legs, I'm sure. I'm almost positive. Child, it's going to live on like Malice in the Palace. Y'all remember that? No. Mm -hmm. When them damn basketball That's players were pick. going for when they was gone for what they it's know, on, honey. It's on that. It's on Netflix, cat. No, did I say NFL? No, NBA. My bad. It was the NBA. NBA. It's mm -hmm. it's called uh, on um, Netflix. It's called Malice at the Palace. Okay. Yeah. And I'm speaking bored. of Malice at the Palace, everybody want to talk about Will and Chris, but where is our justice for storming the Capitol? That was a gang of white people. So, I, I don't. I don't. You know. Again, uneven playing field because selective when, outrage pisses me off. Yeah, selective society. outrage to, to yes, for sure. And then everybody is trying to come out like Alec Baldwin said something. Maybe you just kill somebody. Like, and I, I don't, I don't want to put that on you like that. But slow down. Fabulous tried to say something. Emily B still looking for her teeth, so you Ooh. need to be quiet. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know why people who have a history with Ooh. violence or being associated with that want to say something. 
Like that just that just really gets me. That really gets me. But did y'all see? Um, she is. He knocked her teeth out, and he was like, "I don't see the violence. I don't. I don't. I'm not with all of that." And everybody is like, "But Emily B. Like at least this man hit a man. You Ike Turner and bitches, and that's not how it's supposed to go." But what did y'all think of the Beyonce performance? I already gave my opinion because y'all know I was there for it. I didn't it was see absolutely... the Oscars. Oh, go ahead, Jace. Um, I watched the performance on YouTube. I, I didn't sit down and watch the actual show, but I saw the performance on YouTube and she looked absolutely beautiful. She sounded amazing. The production was fabulous. It, it just tends across the board. That's all I can yeah. say. Yes, God. It if you haven't seen it, beautiful. you can either go to YouTube to see it on Beyonce's YouTube channel, or if you're on Instagram, we have it posted on the Kitty Box uh, Instagram, so you can see it there as well. Um, I thought it was I great. I did watch it. I did watch you did? it. What did you the think? Clip, the, the clip that you posted. Um, I just every time you've sent me a Beyonce live performance, like I have nothing bad to say. Like. Mama is the Michael Jackson of our time when it comes to serving you performance. Like, she's a very talented woman. She's beautiful as I don't know what. And I love that she... A lot of people don't give her her flowers when it comes to knocking on the door of white supremacy, you know, Mm -hmm. and letting the girls know that, bitch, we're melanated, we're popping, we'll forever be the standard. And you're yeah. going to respect us, and I yeah. and I love how she does it very in a subtle way, but it's very profound at the same time. Um, so kudos to her and big ups to her. And hey, I think it's been a while since we've seen her, you know, in, in this in this way live Three in years. a while, right? So Three years. I'm I'm hey, she looked amazing, and I just love whoever is picking out her clothes and who's, who's coming up with these design ideas. Hopefully it's not I don't think it's Tina Knowles anymore, child. Her and her crusty face. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just I'm, I'm here for everything Beyonce's been re- been serving us. Like I have nothing bad to say at all. Beyonce is the girl who um, and that was a guy on Shook Off the Runway. So it wasn't I think it was uh, I want to say Balmain but I don't I, 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 I'm almost certain that I'm wrong but I know it was a brand name um, but she has a history of taking ball gowns or you know evening gowns and going <laughs> and doing what she want to do that dress was not designed to be half on one side and a full gown on the other it's a full mm. gown and mama said no that on me it's not and she snatched it you know she snatched half of it off and she did her motherfucking thing and what's crazy is I, because I've looked at that performance at least a hundred times she has so much going on and she's only using half of the tennis court. And how mm. she wrapped that entire tennis court to look like the inside of a tennis ball, just genius. And you did it in Compton. I would have been on top of a roof trying to see what was going on, bitch. Cause she had the street blocked off. You can see once it pans out, she had the street blocked off or whatever. I would have been on top of a roof trying to see what was going on because you know, it's not every day you get to witness a Beyonce performance. And I think, um, I think she sets the standard you know if y'all really want to be respected in this industry this is how y'all gotta move like put together productions don't just get on stage and do a little one two and think that y'all just fucked it up like you know and speaking of fucking it up um we talked about it in the last episode we talked about her in the last episode but Megan Thee Stallion also performed at the Oscars and this was monumental not only was she the first rapper the first female rapper to perform at the Oscars she was a feature on we don't talk about Bruno that is like the number one song in the world, not the country. Encanto is that girl still, and for you to be attached to that record now, she she's on her way, and she looked amazing. She sounded amazing. She put on a great show. Um, but yeah, um, what do y'all think? Uh, going back to the whole situation, what do y'all think about Jada and all of this? I can be quick. I don't think nothing. I just um, think this is a moment in time that society has put to the forefront to, you know, I have to go there with my truth and justice talk, child. I think it's another blinding factor to what's really happening in our world. Like, there's a lot. Mm-hmm. When we really peel back all this entertainment trash. There's a lot of problems. Like, we're really on our way to starvation. We're really on our way to poverty. We're really on our way to losing a lot of stuff that we covet so dear and that, that sustain our livelihoods in this world like this is just another chalk up of trash to a smoke screen if you will 
to just keep us all divided again and, and um, living in an unconscious ass world child, not being woke at all to save our life. We will go up and give commentary about something as lame and stupid as a slap girl. But while we got the girls over here starving, going hungry, motherfuckers dying, mass genocide going on, white people still doing what white people do against other, you know, national uh, people of color and things of that nature. It's Ukraine. just like, oh, hello, like there's a lot going on in the world and I don't care. Like we can have this conversation with laugh and kiki, but on the grand scale of it all, to answer your question, to even it out, I don't think nothing about these girls. They'll be okay. It's like there's so many things you can do, girl. Tiki Naturals, hair oil, both. No, she girl. doesn't feel bad about the situation. I just felt like it wasn't a sensitive joke knowing that she's battling with that. You know? I mean, a lot. it's 2022. A lot of girls battling with alopecias and patches in their hair, girl. There's a cure for that. They have wonderful natural hair oils, not just mine, but other girls out here in the world who have that kind of stuff. Girl, please get into it. I didn't think that that joke was that offensive. Like, it wasn't... The bitch does have a bald head, and she does look like G.I. Jane. It is what and it is. And G.I. was far, that girl. She, she was, was a bad bitch. Ass. Right. Period. So I didn't really think that it, it was a little dated, maybe, because the movie's so old. But I didn't think it was just that offensive. And to, to go back to what you said, YB, about there's so much going on in the world to be worried about it. Kat, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but she was actually asked about Chris Rock's statement from 20, was it 2016. And that was her answer, was there's so much going on in the world. I'm not even worried about that. That shit don't even matter. She said that. So I don't sit, I don't think that she sat there on Sunday and was just so in her feelings about, oh my God, I have alopecia and I was just no. so offended. I don't no, think I don't that, think she was I offended. I don't think she was offended I, at all. I think Will was more offended than she was. But I will say, despite whatever answer she gave in 2016, again, we have all talked about and agreed that sometimes the Smith will give you political answers and play politics because they are Black Hollywood. I do think that, however, there is an underlining the Smiths versus Chris Rock. I think that aside from whatever may be going on in the public eye, they probably just don't fuck with each other. So that IRA was just like, you trying it, bitch, and you know I don't fuck with you. Like, you know, I gave you grace in 2016. You trying it. Like, I just, I don't think she was offended or anything. I think she, she was just like, you're trying it. I think Will Smith just was like, I don't know. I think it was impulsive as fuck. I think he had adrenaline rushing through his body. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, you know, and I sound like a broken record, it didn't call for a slap. Like, even like he, like Chris Rock said, it was a G.I. Jane joke, dude. Like, I don't know. But um, having said that, in an ideal world, like even with Will Smith checking Chris Rock, how would y'all have preferred this to go? If you felt the way about it and you were, you were that in your motherfucking feelings about it, you should have smacked them backstage or at the after party or in the parking lot or you should have met up with him the next day, whatever, and had coffee and said, look, dude, this is going too far. I'm over this bullshit. You, hell, you even could have sent out a tweet and said, this is what it is. This is how I feel about it. It's, it was, it, it, the joke wasn't that outrageous to warrant that type of uh, response. Mm -hmm. so, that's where I'm at with it. Okay. For me, I mean, we don't... I have no choice but to side on the on the side of, of that, pretty much the, that same way of thinking. Girl, we can talk about this later, because <laughs> I was gonna come in it like, oh, you never can tell someone how they're supposed to react, but that's not like he was in a fighting situation or a, a right. situation that needed an immediate response. You know, like a reflex, the same reflex that Chris Rock should have <laughs> honey, to avoid that that plunder of a slap. And plus, that's disrespectful to a man, especially a black man slapping it, slapping somebody, girl. Like, you're not the Hancock, you know, you're not the the Wild Wild West, Will Smith. You're mm -hmm. not the Gemini man. Like, you, yeah. you open handed slap somebody. That's some that's some like I hate to say this, some female shit. Like, no. That's it was a female man. slap though. He didn't. Yeah. His hand was like this. It was. It was a very female slap. I will say. Um. I've already said. I think his response, if he was gonna do anything, was just to yell. You know, the yelling alone would have gotten Chris's attention. Um, I wouldn't have engaged. I because my thing is you're giving people too much, and that's mm -hmm. the thing I don't like. You know, I'm big on that. I don't want to break my character 
to please these other people because now you are the conversation right now and not in the good way oh speaking i'm glad you said that uh, you were speaking earlier about how sometimes people have their breaking points this nigga 50 at 50 you should be able to control your emotions i understand you having breaking points at 20 and 30 at 50 and after being in the game for over 40 years or close to 40 years you should have some level of you know restraint about yourself what would have really fucked the game up if he would have slapped chris and then as he was walking away saying what was all this energy for august what then? Are you going to go back and punch the man? Are you going to go back and slap him again? If he would have retaliated with like something like that, it would have really just kind of slapped him back in the face. Let me say one. Let me say this real quick. And I hear a lot of people saying, oh, well, what, where was all this energy for August? Let me tell y'all why there was no energy for August. You can't have that energy for someone you were also plowing down as well. Ooh. I don't know about that. Mm. I'm not going to go that far, but I will say Despite what Will keyword, Smith says, keyword, he was, the key word was entanglement. Yeah, and it was again, I, in love. that that goes to to my point. I think hmm. Will Smith wasn't offended by that because Will Smith had full knowledge of what was going on. Yeah, you know, he August was Alcina, nothing. He sure did. August Alcina than... was in your house. You know, y'all were a family at one point. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he was offended. I think he just was like, "Damn, you you talk too much." But I don't hmm. think he was offended by that. Not at all. Yeah, that comment mm. never made sense to me. Where was all this energy for August? And my, like he was consent that all three of these motherfuckers knew what was going on. What are you talking about? And it was going on for what a couple years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like that's a dumbass question, a dumbass logic. I don't know. That's a dumbass logic from the from the ongoers and the and, you know the spectators. Yeah. For Chris Rock to say it would have slayed the Oscars. Oh yeah, that would have. He would have he slayed too, the Oscars. But he was too fucking shook for that. To he was. To his mind. If y'all remember, like, he, he did have the moment of silence. But before he got silent, he was like, "Boy, I oughta, you know what?" He just kind of like pulled back. He was. You could tell he wanted to retaliate, but he was just like on the Oscar stage. They paid me this money, <laughs> like bitch. All right, like, but I mean, he gonna get it on the back end anyway because after that slap, his sales and tour, his tour sales skyrocketed. People are buying tickets like they never bought tickets before. So, cause I'm sure they feel like he gonna talk about it, and I'm sure he is. When Cat Williams got jumped by them kids, he talked about it. So that's part of you know being a comedian is taking your pain. <laughs> that's part of being a comedian. Taking your pain and then laughing at it. Them kids wore his ass out at that part. <laughs> <laughs> they wore his ass out at that part. They beat him. I was like, girl, I'm not. How are you a whole grown man and you finna let children wear you out of the park? Child, please. Now it's time to bring it to the box. As y'all know, every episode we bring something movie, moment, song, a look. Girl, we're not gonna talk about Will and Chris no more. So, what do y'all bring it to the box? I want to bring this to the box. Um, shout out to the queen, and I'm sorry, honey, y'all can say what y'all want to say. I'm not a barb, but I possibly may be on my way. Nicki Minaj's new song with Fabio Foreign is called We Go Up, and when I Ooh. tell you she slayed, she has a whole monologue, child, of her slaying down the... She's reminding us of why she is the rap queen, why lyrics matter, why writing in the pen matters period honey she came for the girls um i don't have any lyrics to cite off at the moment because i'm still getting into the song like that but if you haven't had a chance to get into Nicki minaj and fabio foreign's we go up you're you're missing out this is the personification of these girls can't hang Mm. they can't hang the other trash Period. that she did with, um, you know, Lil Baby, the two little singles that she put in, they were cute songs, but this one right here is why Nicki is set apart from the rest of these girls. Period. Hands yes. down. Speaking of female rappers, I also want to bring someone to the box. And I just said a name <laughs> right before this, and I was completely wrong. <laughs> I want to bring... <laughs> Good thing you're gonna cut that part out. Yeah. I want to bring motherfucking Lotto to the box. This oh, bitch just Lotto. released an album on Friday. When I tell you from start to finish, minus the fucking song with Kodak Black. That's the only song I don't particularly care for. Mm-hmm. But this motherfucking album is so goddamn hot. And she writes her own shit too. So we gotta shout okay. her out for that. Um, 
my favorite song on there is well actually there's two songs it's a song called um willie with 21 savage it's really okay. hot and also my favorite is it's giving so if you have not checked out her 7 7 album that just came out this past friday please get into it i, I told you guys about it have y'all had a chance to listen to it i've heard some songs but i didn't hear the whole entire thing yet okay. i'm gonna get into it this week i'm gonna download it yes another song called trust no bitch that's really hot um mm. it, it's some hot shit on it she got a song with Lil dirk and i y'all know i love Lil dirk um, it's a hot song too, but the song it's given, that's probably I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just say that's my favorite song off of there, but okay. Check it out. Yeah, it's Lotto seven seven seven. And I think um she just released her remix uh for uh Big Dick Energy right. with Mariah mm-hmm. Carey. So yes, God. Um shout Did out you to listen Lotto. to that, YB? Did you I listen sure to did. that? I'm sure you I did. Sure did. <laughs> I sure did. You know I did. When you're co-signed by the everlasting queen supreme of this entire life span of ours, child, like yes. you have no choice but to pay your respects. Hello, God. Shout that out to was so cute. The vi- the little visuals, all that yeah. was so fab. And Mariah looks good. The song mm-hmm. sounds amazing. I, I I really like it. And you know I kind of fuck around with and Mariah. And catch this team. Lot, most she of those, really gave me what I needed. Most of that song is new vocals oh yeah you can hear that i, I heard yeah. that you can hear it yeah so it was new cute vocals. to hear it was cute to have an updated version of that and in, in, in the real time voice so shout out to my girl everlasting yeah movie. shout I out mean, to mariah plus never mind i'm not gonna yeah never mind. you about to go there you are about to go there <laughs> <laughs> I know. Man, uh, let's, let's not let's not act like that was acapella. Now, like, come on now, bro. I mean, all moving these years along. Later, though. Go ahead, cat. Go ahead, cat. Mama, did I'll her keep thing. it in the. Give her that. She did. Her Mama thing. did her I, thing, I, I was, and she I looked was, amazing. She looked good. amazing. And before I give my piece, um, shout out to Mariah again because Mama's giving a master class on how to sing like her. So, um, shout out to Mariah. Um, but to keep it in the same vein of music, I will say that um. I, I don't know if I already talked about this, so I'll bring up two albums. Candy Drip by Lucky Day. I have been stuck I like on that. that album. That album is amazing. Oh, I love that. Um, he had, a, this is his second album. So his first album, I didn't get a chance to hear, but this album, I don't know how I got into the wave of it. When I sank my teeth into it, I love, I can listen to this album straight through. I love it. But um, honorable mention, YB, you told me about this. Megan Thee Stallion something for the hotties? Girl! When you're working out, because we haven't talked about, um, you know, gym life this episode, but when you're working out, this is the perfect soundtrack. I have a gym playlist of about two hours worth of music. Fuck that. For the time being, I'm listening to something for the hotties, bitch. I need to get in my groove. And she is like, this is some of her best work. You know, uh, Good News or whatever the album was, it was mediocre at best. Sorry, Megan, I gotta be honest. But something for the hotties is that girl. So if you haven't already, listen to both Lucky Day Candy Drip. Um, he's from New Orleans, girl. Support the kid. And uh, Megan Thee Stallion, something for the hotties. Make sure y'all get into it. Make sure y'all get into those albums. So, um, of course, right now we're in, you know, the thick of it. We're talking about music and this episode was about Will and Chris Rock. So we don't have any kitty mail for this week. So any last thoughts, guys, before we close it out? Um, I enjoy chatting with you guys as usual. And we will see you all next week. We will see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.